I know someone who's a professional basketball player and I asked him about steroids and he said, well, if you get injured, you can take up to 200 mg a week, which is considered a TRT dose. But that's a, actually a pretty big dose. That's a one typical one mil injection. That's a, that's a significant difference. That's going to put- wait, hold on. It's a one milliliter? Oh, so, wait, what? so the typical dosage of, of testosterone is 200 milligrams per mil per So ml. one cc is how many milligrams? One mil. One mil. Yeah. So these guys are taking two? No, they're taking one One of those a week is what they're allowed That's to take. That's fucking huge. Right, because most people are either break it. We talked about this, uh, I think, before, but breaking that up into some smaller injections uh, amounts yeah. is probably better to just keep androgen levels more reasonable. But what's a normal level that people take per week? 100 to 200 milligrams per week is right. pretty typical. S typically so spread out. Like Two tenths it, of a cc. So you right. So if you're thinking cc's, like someone might divide that into so half a cc on Monday, half a cc on Thursday, right? That's a that's a reasonable thing. But, but that's still a lot. It's still a lot. I mean, half a cc. That's, yeah, I could. So five I couldn't take that much on a yeah. That, yeah. You'd be raging. Yeah, exactly. Most typical now people will take somewhere. It, it pays to think about it in milligrams. People will take somewhere between you know ten and forty milligrams every third day or so. Right, you just think about that. Ten so about and forty, really? Yeah, somewhere between ten. Yeah, because some people, you know, came into it with their testosterone at six fifty, and when you talk about replacement, you know, nowadays people will prescribe four, forty is so high. Forty milligrams every three or four days. That's still one hundred and twenty milligrams, you know, per week or so. It right? seems a forty lot. on Monday, forty on Wednesday, forty on Friday. At, I take one point five every four days. One point five. One in, yeah, like you, like if you look at a one yeah, cc, yeah, you take the little yeah, a little tiny. Point, so that's it's like thirty that amount. That's thirty milligrams every four days. You're taking a very low dose. You're taking if it's two hundred mg per mil, which almost certainly it is in this country, testosterone cypionate. It's going to be you are taking thirty milligrams every four days. So someone, some people take up to four. We'll take some people are taking essentially more than three times what you're taking is allowed according to this player right i don't want the nba to come after they me you know either raging. yeah either they're going to come after me to fi yeah I'm looking into an article about it just to see what they were saying this is on espn a couple of years ago it says like the it's a little secret that nobody knows about and they're talking about sleep deprivation the whole article is about sleep deprivation but mm -hmm. testosterone's mentioned a bunch what what about sleep deprivation? That, you know, I was reading something about that with sleep deprivation and jet lag. They were talking about one of uh, a game that was played where the players flew in the day of and didn't have the best performance, and they were in talking a, about in a WNBA game recently. The players were complaining. Not that they, WNBA. Oh, it was regular NBA. NBA okay. Yeah, I yeah. just know that that happened in WNBA game like last week. They were complaining about that, but it does happen it, in the it NBA must, too. It must be a factor. Like you would never do that in a fight. Oh, so huge. That's what I mean, they're talking about. It dropped these players down to like a twenty-year-old down to a guy with that was like should have been in his fifties. Oh, so they did a test. The yeah. test on their testosterone okay. okay so hoyer and his staff consider their efforts to counter sleep loss like deep breathing exercise to optimize sleep to be all but a band-aid for a broken bone by the 2014 2015 season royer and his staff had fully committed to their investigation of sleep deprivation tracking 18 players over multiple teams in each conference when the season began those players testosterone levels ranked on average in the 88th percentile compared to males their own age after two months of nba play and travel their levels had fallen to the 70th percentile by march the 32nd percentile a 64 percent drop in just five months so that's just being worn the fuck out yeah i mean i get called a lot uh, do some work with military do some work with any kind of high performance teams that are dealing with this kind of thing they want to know how can we maintain hormone levels and performance. And you always start with get regular sleep yeah, <laughs> as much as everything. you can. It's, how everything. Do, it's everything. And how do you, you know, one night, no big deal, but two nights, three nights, you're impaired. And a lot of these guys also are really disciplined, but some go out and party afterwards and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it's always maximize exposure to sunlight in the first half of the day. Number one thing for just making sure that you sleep well that night and then mm. limiting artificial light exposure by dimming lights from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Very few people do those two things, but they have an outsized effect on sleep. And there's a really nice study out of Israel this last year that showed that if you had people, this was men and women, go outside for 20 minutes, three times a week, and try and expose as much of their skin as they possibly could to sunlight while still being decent, right? that it raised testosterone and estrogen significantly. 